Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Poet, and today I'm going to be showing you a little tutorial about the Mildraker route in Dark Souls 1. The Mildraker route consists of the Dragon Tooth into uh, magic for late game, killing all the bosses in Dark Souls 1. So um, first of all, I wanted to tell I want to tell you that um, the footage in this uh, video has been lost at some points, so I'm going to be replacing at certain uh, points the footage with my PB, my current PB. Um, I'm going to be talking over it and say what um, every menu has to be uh, the correct way to menu and um, every stuff like that. So there are going to be some minor mistakes here and there, but as long as you have audio on and listen to me, um, I can correct everything. And most of them are minor menu mistakes that you will find out on your own. Uh, but uh, without further ado, just uh, let's get straight into it. So first of all, what I showed is you want to be in offline mode for speedruns since it's required. Uh, it is required in certain... Uh, it, you want to be in offline mode so you won't have any orange messages blocking your way. It is also... Um, with certain glitches, it's just actually completely banned right now. So you want to be in offline mode. That's you're gonna can do that by going in offline mode in Steam. Other thing I want to tell you is that you always want to have a filler. Um, it's just a character that you're not gonna use, and um, you want that filler so you don't have to redo the save or redo the settings like lighting settings over and over again um, at the start of every run. So I'm going to make a new character and you can give it any name you want. The um, gender is going to be male since it's easier for duping. Uh, females have uh, more requirements in order to do the, the dupe. You want to go with the hunter for the bow. Then the bow we're going to use for moose swap. You're going to use black firebomb because that's the fastest way of asylum. And the rest is kind of whatever. And let's jump right into the run. So you want to skip the first cutscene since that cutscene is already counting towards in-game time, which is when it's going to be timed with. Um, so in-game time is extremely consistent, makes it fair across all platforms. Um, timing starts right there and ends on the credits. So at the credits, you either split and check your in-game time, or you all that for. Um, at this ladder, you unequip the um, sword hilt and the gloves. That way, you can still fast roll with all your items equipped, but you get maximum bleed resistance for uh, for the part later on. So you want to run over to this pile of bricks and you want to start spamming fire bombs. Timing can be a little bit weird, uh, and you can spam the roll there, roll in a good direction. And you kill a side with five fire bombs. Next up, you want to pick up the shield and the sword. You can just keep running here. Um, also, what you're going to see me doing a lot is stamina management. So, you want to be picking stuff up, interacting with stuff with your lowest amount of stamina possible. That way, you can run for the longest time, and as you can see, stamina regenerates on four gates. So, yeah. Run for the longest time before you do a pickup, a fog gate, any interaction actually. So talk to Oscar since it's actually faster than killing him. Go up because we still need the bow and we're gonna leave asylum. So for all skips, glitches and all that stuff I want you to uh, advise to visit speedsource.com. I'm also gonna be linking a couple of um, Video or yeah, um, videos in my in the video description, but speedsauce.com is going to be your main source. So once you're at the door, you're going to go and quit out. And quitting out actually skips um, this opening animation, and it's faster in game time wise. So skip the cutscene and we're gonna make our way up to the lower berg, um, or upper berg really. 
I, you can block this one here, but you kind of want to roll through it. Um, the stamina management right there at the start of the stairs is kind of important, so copy that. Since it will m most of the time bait out the attack of the others. Also have one and a half bar as soon as you reach the top of the stairs, so you can have perfectly stamina at this point. Equip the bow and the arrows, drink an Estus, and during it you're gonna quit out. That resets the enemy position and gets rid of the Drake. As you can see, this run is actually segmented, we'll come back to that later. So, for the lineup, you wanna go and select the fire bombs. You wanna go that you make, stu um, be sure to be stuck in this corner. Then you see here, you have the front side and the side of this pillar. You wanna go in, in the middle here. There is this like line that um, makes the front from the side. You want to go and line up with that line. And when the height you want to be is this specific thing. You want to line it up with your head. So you're going to run into the side and then line up your head with the side. With like the, the seam thing. Throw two bombs and it should kill the merchant. So here you can do a plunge to skip your Falling damage, so you plunge, and right before the before you hit the ground, you're gonna roll, so you don't take any fall damage. Kill the the, the dog with a bomb, and here I made already a small mistake. You want to go and kick the dude. I somehow survived here, I think. Yes, got kind of lucky, <laughs> but you want to kick him. If you kick too early, like I did right here. You actually will, um, you will not get kicked far enough. But yeah, so kick him and then he will actually like move out of the way and you can grab it no problem. So the thing for beginners, if you want to heal, um, which is kind of nice at, at times, just go a bit further than the door right here and do a quit out. That way the dog here won't notice you. You can safely heal. And here for PewDiePie skip, it's a dialogue skip for this door. So the dialogue trigger is going to be like around here. But the interaction of the door is going to be like a little bit further, further out. So you want to go and make sure to like walk at it directly in a slow angle. And spam X or A. That way you can open the door and um, you, you don't have to sit through the dialogue. Which will be faster. So, what we actually did there is we freed a merchant called the Griggs. Here you do another quit out to reset enemy aggro, by the way. And Griggs we're gonna use for magic and fall control. And a ring. <clears throat> so here's another hollow that we're gonna kick. And roll through the wooden things there. You can strafe those or roll. It doesn't really matter too, too much. Just make sure you don't get hit. <laughs> Uh, pick up the gold pine resin and jump over the side of the stairs. You can avoid the barrel here by jumping. And after that's done, you want to go and unequip the armor and unneeded items. Which is going to be the chest piece, the gloves, the bombs and the orange uh, soapstone. So here is a new strat, or new. You can do the thing that people doing runs or you can do this it's kind of the same it doesn't really matter too too much so one hundred r1 running r1 is important the normal r1 two two-handed r1s uh, yeah, i kind of messed up there but then you just regain full stamina and then spam r1 and he's dead so i do really recommend you to watch other people run this game um, right now or watch fods since um, there are a lot of different strats and I'm doing right here. My strats are by no means the most, like the most optimal. There are some strats here and there that are not optimal. Um, but you can still get a really, really good time with this, with these strats. So this is kind of, you wanna just watch this over and over and see how I'm doing this. You wanna shoot the drag, um, then go to the side, buff and cut the tail. You can also do this with the meal breaker, by the way, that we just picked up in the Um Yeah, so equip the meal breaker and rearrange the, um, 
Drake sword for move swapping, which is going to be a video linked in the description. Um, you want so that the Drake sword is right above the bow. So here, I'm going to do a toggle escape, which I have not talked about. Uh, toggle escaping is um, if you do mid air, you either toggle your weapon with a D pad or on two hands. You cannot two hands, you can on two hand. <clears throat> and then spam circle or B. Um, you actually won't get the landing animation, but you actually get uh, toggling the weapon animation, which is faster because you can still walk forward. So, as I'm taking the bonfire here, resting and not doing anything else, I'm gonna talk about when you just spam roll and when you toggle. Um, you spam roll basically as long as you have full stamina or if the stamina you regain by toggling is more than your max basically so if you're like empty on your stamina like i was there you toggle because you regain stamina and it's a little bit faster if i was there on full stamina you just spam the circle or b to roll out of it since rolling is faster than just walking like the little optimizations so up here we're gonna go and activate the elevator and make our way to um, gargoyles there are two ways for the hollow room. Um, either you can just stand there and block the two hollows on the left with your shield and then just run through. Or you can do what I do right here, which is a little bit faster. You can roll this guy and then you can push this dude with the mill breaker. Uh, here on this ladder you switch out for the bow and you're gonna move off the ladder. Um, one thing to do note is that once in jumping animation, jump attack animation, the hollows have infinite poise. So there might be instances where he jumps attack you when you attack and you get counter damage and you just die. So that's something to keep in mind. So for the gargles, the second three hits, so you kind of want to go for the tail cut at first. Uh, do another hit there to build up the stagger. The next hit will stagger off your move swap and then another move swap to kill him. For the last gargoyle, you just do a move swap in an R1. Another instance of watch a lot of runs, practice this a lot. Since the gargoyles are like really, um, are actually a difficult boss to do consistent fast every time. So watch a lot of runs and practice a lot. So on the ladder you can do a little bit of, little bit of menuing. Here you want to go and put your bow in your first and shoot in the second. And you want to dupe the homeward bone off this lever. So with the gargoyles dead, we're gonna go and grab ourselves probably the most overpowered item in the game. Uh, called the Red Tracer Ring. The Red Tracer Ring will basically double your damage outputs as long as you're below 20% uh, HP. Accidentally did 120% speed there. Uh, I do this to normal. There. All right. So um, during I didn't really talk about this yet, but this is actually segmented since I didn't really bother doing this all in one go. Um, so you're gonna see me tap out of the game a couple of times. That is just because I'm either restarting the recording or making a save file. So up here is gonna be something called uh, Flower Skip. Um, which is a stupid name, but hey. Um, what you're gonna do is... Once you run down here... There's gonna be three, of course. Once you run down here, you wanna go and jump in a certain angle. And that will skip like running all the way around... Um, to descend like the little stairs right there. So yeah, right here I'm also gonna making a save file for this. And we started the recording. So right here you're gonna run across these lines and you're gonna watch out for um, this specific plant. And you want to jump in this direction so you can land over there. So in that direction forward. 
I tried to show it with the bow, but I can't really. Um, but down here, there is actually a, a little part of the rock sticking out where you're going to land on. So you want to jump alongside the rock and you want to jump at this plant. You're going to jump there and you're going to land on this. You spam circle for B. And you roll again and you want to roll again and heal. Optimally you heal once, but if you don't want to get killed by this black knight, which I don't. Uh, heal twice, you get the grass crash shield, and you're gonna run past this guy. He might actually block you right um, at the grass crash shield, and then you can just go and run along. Uh, I can show it. Yeah, then you can just run, run along this. You can like walk over this part and like pass him like that. But he was kind of slow, so I can just run past him but if he is fast and he's like on your heels you can just like block him and then go over the little uh, thing i just pointed out so you want to switch to the grass crash shield here and then you want to quit out as soon as you walk over there to spawn the elevator back on top so at the elevator you want to heal to full and drop everything that is not the milled breaker, the drake sword, the short bow, or the grass crash shield. Everything else you drop. So here, uh, stamina management and pathing is important. So, um, yeah, watch this carefully and try to mimic it. So you want to regain stamina to full before these guys if you want to be safe. Uh, you don't if you want to be optimal. Like like right here, I was not completely empty, which means that the pathing was, or more like the stamina management was not optimal. Uh, however, I could take a hit from these drakes and not fall off. So it's kind of the consistency speed trade off. So here you pick up the rotation ring and you dupe a hammer bone from the pickup. So up next is going to be a, a sequence break called Sense Gate Skip, um, which abuses the um, fact that you can actually repose an enemy and um, touch the death cam, but not the kill box. Going to be a video linked in the description. If there are any questions at any given point, um, just feel free to comment them, and I'll try to answer them as best as I could can. So yeah, perform Sense Gate Skip. Again, video in the description if you want a more detailed explanation. One tip that was really helpful for me is like use controller for movement or for sprinting and the keyboard WASD for movement. Also a tip that's really helpful. This the wall where the first stairs is, so this wall is also the same wall where the exit will be from this. The exit will be on this side. Get stuck there, but see the exit is on the same side as the first wall. So use always hold W and like adjust with A and D. That way you I feel like it's easier. So here you want to jump a little bit further into sense and then do a quit out. This is all for pendulum cycles. So pendulum cycles are all on like a general cycle. So if you quit out always at the same spot, they will always be in the same cycle, which is really nice. So you can just like regain stamina here to full and then continue walking forward. I can strafe along uh, across these guys. So I either use the pendulums here to block the lightning or roll or strafe like that. If you do get hit, um, it's not too much of an issue. You want to be full HP, so here you can actually, while waiting for the snake, you can drink an Estus. So the reason you want to be full HP is before an RTSR setup. And speaking of, we're going to equip the RTSR right here. RTSR is a abbreviation of the Red Tasting Ring, by the way. So here you want to quit out at this specific spot. It's not too, too um, specific, but you want to out around there 
that is all because of Venom Cycles. So here you want to go and jump, so you can take a counter hit from the trap, which will give you perfect RT Sorry. This is why I don't want to be too low HP. And the uh, Pendulum Cycles match perfectly. And here you want to go and punch this guy out of the way. And make your way through the last uh, set of Pendulums. So a little thing about the effect of the Grasker Shield, the Grasker Shield is obviously faster for stamina regen, so try and having it out as much as you can. Um, however, if it's gonna be like a hassle, um, switching out the Grasker Shield for a for something else, don't bother, because most of the time your um, like the time you gain from using Grasker Shield is so minor. That if you have suboptimal boss, then you already lose it. So also try to move so well you're really low on stamina. Do keep in mind you need at least one point in stamina to do any action. So also two handing the bow. So you need at least some stamina, but try to be low as you regain stamina and you're not able to sprint right after move swapping. So kill the archer. You actually have to kill him in order to get enough souls. So two running attacks here, or one running attack. And second will stagger. You can miss a single hit right there, one part of the running attack, and then one more running attack uh, after you stagger to make him fall off. So if you get a snake suicide, I think you cannot. You can skip killing the um, crossbow dude. There is a specific amount of souls you need, but I cannot remember right now. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, so here's another minor. Gameplay mistake. I'm trying to go for the end on the bonfire, but I realize that you don't have to because you actually skip it, which is part of the time save of this route. So skip the end on the bonfire. You're gonna get it in a different way. So you're gonna get the elevator. Use, don't be range. <laughs> I choked the menu here. Use the soul of an iron golem and heal once. And then jump off the moving elevator. You can jump off the elevator while it's going down. So here I prefer using toggle escapes, even though my stamina is full. Since you have, like, you don't make as much uh, distance, so you don't fall off as easily. Uh, I really recommend healing to full here, because the um, rafters can be a bit of a pain. So you can, the pain the guardians behaved here. But um, if they do a jumping attack or any attack at all, be first and just poke them with the meal breaker. They don't have any poise, so you can just poke them and they will get staggered. So if you think they're going to hit you, hit them first and you're fine. So on the first ladder you saw me re-equip the bow instead of the drake sword. And on this um, fogate, equip the drake sword again. And on this lever, you're gonna move the drake sword to the uh, most up position. That is to make it uh, easier to drop, because after ONS, we're not gonna touch the drake sword anymore. So, yeah, we're gonna drop that. So, here there's a fun thing stay at the corner here, and this specific pillar, um, take it like really wide, that way you won't get stuck on this elevator. And then cut the corner again and move your way to the bonfire. So check behind you if the gargoyle is following you. If so, you can do a quit out. And here you want to level, not that, you want to level 22 endurance, 27 strength, and 10 intelligence. Keep in mind that non respawnable enemies like the gargoyle. Uh, won't reset position while resting at bonfire. So the gargoyle is still gonna be on the stairs here. That's a small thing to keep in mind. Also, um, didn't really talk about this, but it's kind of common knowledge at this point. Let me talk about it later. So, so you push the lever here and do the specific pausing that I do. You go around here, down the little steps there, then cut the corners, regain stamina for the shortest amount of time you can and keep running. Then you perfectly align yourself so you don't have to wait or anything. Jump, 
and do a crit out. And just like that, the um, elevator didn't finish its position before you did the crit out, but you actually are on the other side. So right now the elevator is going to be um, down again, so you don't have to pull it anymore. So uh, what I wanted to talk about is blocking while sprinting. So while sprinting and they're facing enemies, you want to go and raise your shield and block. Um, that way you can roll out of a sprint. Normally, because sprinting and rolling is on the same button, you can't. Also, I really recommend looking back here and rolling if you see the the lightning, the spears coming at you. So look back. You can strafe them, but it's less in, less consistent and it's really not worth the small time save that you get. Another minor thing is to uh, never actually lock on when it's not needed. If this guy is blocking you, just use the Drake's or two-handed R2 to throw him off. So what I recommend is learning the claw grip and using it for approximately 90% of the run, especially for boss fights. Um, don't lock on. I rarely use the lock on. I will at this fight. Alright, so here you're gonna toggle escape a non counter uh, hit, so just normal walking, walking past, and toggle escape to. And you do this toggle escape by just spamming the toggle, uh, so right D pad or left D pad for that matter. So here we pick up the Dragon Tooth, and the Dragon Tooth is gonna be our main source of um, damage for this um, majority of the run. Late game, you're gonna switch to magic, but for now, we pick up the Dragon Tooth. You can take the interior bonfire here um, if you're learning, which I really, really recommend. Alright, so here I made a save foul because ONS is inconsistent and a pain. Even with this route, it's better in this route than like full magic routes, but it's still a pain. So you can moose up up the stairs, which makes it less scary here. Um, you can straight this guy or roll it. It's obviously faster to moose up up here. And all right, so for ONS, let me stop right there. For ONS, there is going to be quite a bit to talk about. So Ornstein does like half the time he dash, or a little bit more, like I would like say sixty percent. He will dash. You want to enter the foggy, by the way. Not on the far left, not in the middle, but a little bit in between. So, if Ornstein dashes, go on the left side behind this pillar. If Ornstein does the lightning opening, um, you can roll with it and go on the right here. But I wouldn't risk it myself, um, do a quit out. If Ornstein does any other attack than the lightning or the dash, go on the right. That way, Smo will take longer to reach you. Um, and if you go left here, then once you will glitch around the pillar and will dash straight to you. Um, this is one of those fights where I would say that lock on is really stupid to use. So, um, unless you're attacking, don't lock on uh, and just look around unless you know the exact position of Smo is. Because, yeah, it's gonna be hard to see where Smo is. Uh, if you're locked on to Ornstein, especially that uh, is the case when you have to go right here. Um, because you're mid rolling, try and learn to strafe a lot of attacks and bait out follow ups, which you can punish. Also, bait out attacks from Smo and then run to Ornstein instead. Like, Smo can uh, like do a backstab or an attack that's really slow and that gives you time to punish Ornstein. Other than that, you kind of want Smo to be stuck against the pillar. Um, in the case where you cannot kill Ornstein quickly. But the ideal ONS fight is going to be looking something along these lines. You enter the full gate, so a little bit to the left. He's going to dash to go to the left. Right here, this is the, one of the rare cases I use the lock on, since it's actually worth it. You're going to roll past Ornstein, so Ornstein is going to be facing, with his back is going to be facing the wall here. Lock on. Uh, give me one second. 
So you lock on and you roll past him. Now, now Ornstein's back is like against the wall, which makes him less likely to jump away. Um, right now, you're gonna go and do two running attacks. And because this opening is like Ornstein is here so fast, there's a real high chance that Smo will be too slow. However, this is not 100% consistent. So again, here we're trading off um, consistency for a good time save, which is definitely worth it, in my opinion. So you're gonna do a running attack and do another running attack. And see, so Smo is too slow. He often gets stuck behind the pillar. He can also do a long shovel, right, like point blank long shovel, and then you're just dead. So, Smo, super Smo, will stagger into it as well. Not if you, if he jumps back. You have kind of bad RNG here. But yeah, two hits. Another two. And another two. Unhook up the Dragon Tooth. And drop the Drake Sword here. I think I forgot. No, I didn't. Drop the Drake Sword. At this door, same as it asylum, do a quit out. And this will skip the opening. After you load back in, kill Guinevere by shooting her at any specific any area. And jump the homeward bone. You can start boning out when the particles of her death disappear. Alright, so now you're at this bonfire, and I kinda messed up here. Don't sit. Oh yeah, uh, this is obviously just showing off some mechanics. If you warp to the wrong place, like I just did right here, you can actually go into the quit out menu and save and quit. What that does is, oh, well, you can see it right here. You cancel, oh my, uh, hello. <laughs> you cancel the warp. So. Imagine that was the first. So you stand up right there um, from the warp, you unequip the shield at the stand up animation because otherwise you will fed roll. You move up in front of the fog gate and you equip the armor. Um, keep in mind if you failed the, um, the quit out at the spiral staircase, the one that um, made it below, like on my way to ONS away from the uh, when I leveled up here at this bonfire uh, if you fail that quit out go and pull the lever before you face Gwendolyn so you pull the lever so you spawn in unequip the shield pull the lever and then you move up and do the rest at the fog gate equip all your armor so now you want RTSR so there are two attacks that Gwendolyn can um, can do um, that gives you RTSR. One is the arrows right here. So stop sprinting. Make sure you have enough stamina to block all of it. And block all arrows. It gives you RTSR. The second attack that will give you arrows. You have to wait here in, uh, until the, she's done spamming her bullshit attacks. Uh, the other um, one is the single attack we haven't seen here. The big missile thing that goes through everything take a counter hit from that and then you're good as well after killing go and use homeward bone since it's faster than just running back in game time wise at the stand up unequipped um unequip the dragon tooth and during the warp you either have to unequip all armor still or not like i didn't so unequip all armor uh, equip the grass crash shield and equip the silver winnowing. Here you're gonna go and talk to Grix and say yes. We're gonna buy fall control, great heavy soul arrow, the catalyst and the bellowing uh, dragon dress ring. The one that boosts the sword space. It's the top one. So here I'm not sure if I showed it. I opened the menu real quick. Yeah I did. Um, that is because there's a thing in this game called menu cancels. Um, if um, like go back a little bit look at my soul being grayed out after i'm done buying it's it's time out it's just like grayed out for a bit right if it's really quick so it's like it's like grayed out and gets the light like in just like that 
you have a menu cancel. So what you want to do is then open up the menu to get rid of it. So you want to roll on here and during that you want to dupe off that roll. Dupe two times and you should have around this HP. Then roll on here and go and rest uh, at the nest. So a menu cancel is basically when uh, the closing of the menu is kind of stored and yeah um, the next time you open the menu the game closes it immediately so if you would do that during the dupe you would open the menu to go and drink the estus during the dupe but there is no estus because the menu closed itself so you're just gonna use the soul instead which is bad so spam start to get rid of it um, Go into this corner and move swap for these guys to move out of your way. I obviously failed it. Then you want to go in here. And there's a small backup here. Say you missed the R2 star setup up. Uh, you have like either way too little or way too much HP. You want to go and heal back to full. Go in, quit out, and go in again. We'll give you R2 star. 100% consistent, no matter the uh, equipment load. So if Stray Demon opens up with that, uh, it's kind of bad. You want to go on his left side to block. I got a holo here, so I'm going to have to keep an eye on him. Normally Stray Demon kills that holo, but here he didn't. I also ran out of stamina, which is why I didn't finish him. And here I... Almost. Oh, there. And there I go straight. So on this ladder, go into your menu and equip the Bellowing Dragon Press Ring or BDR. We're gonna abbreviate stuff here. And we're gonna kill the Black Knight because he's in our way. And I'm gonna unequip the Dragon Tooth. Here he can give you a drop. And you pick up the door and chip the bow. If he gives you a drop, you want to drop that during the um, um, Undead Dragon kill. So you have to wait for the Undead Dragon to die in a bit. Like 5 minutes time, like 2 or 3 minutes time. Um, so during that wait you want to go and drop um, any items you get from that guy. It can be either the Black Knight sword or the shield. So for this upcoming segment I didn't really uh, remember. But you kind of want to sprint and go and get a knife in your bag. So you kind of want to, you're dependent on uh, enemies to give you RTSR here. So you kind of want to eliminate any RNG right from the start. So if you take a counter hit from a throwing knight, um, you are already set up for RTSR. You only have to do one more thing. So you can skip the upcoming part. If for some reason you didn't get one, which is quite common, um, be completely naked. Don't take a counter. Just here I was already releasing, I was normally walking. Get hit by one of these guys and toggle the escape. So the reason why you want to do this setup is since if you get hit by two of these guys and you don't take counter hits, you are still fine. So the holo that here did the jumping attack can also provide you with enough damage. Just make sure that you get either a choke knife in the back or one of these three holos uh, a jumping attack on you. Then you toggle a... From the throwing knife you toggle... You don't toggle, but you take a counter, so you sprint. And from the holos you take a non-counter, so you just run or just walk. Um, then it's dependent on this guy who always shoots an arrow. If you have a lot of HP, like right here with um, the hollows, you take a counter, so you run into that arrow. If you get a throwing knife, you just take it normally. You don't have to uh, take a counter because that will actually kill you. The reason why these setups are so specific is because you need um, a, quite some um, health left here for the drop down. So you want to move up here before the under dragon. You can do that a little bit before and do two quit outs, but I won't. So I do the first quit out here. 
and then I'm gonna kill it on the dragon. The way you do that is um, do a running attack, an R1, and another running attack. You can see it right here. Keep in mind that Dragon is an extremely long weapon. So even though you, it looks like I'm far away, start your attack immediately after. After loading in. So two running attacks, an R1 and a running attack. Here you can drop the item, like the, the, sh the shield or the, um, the sword. You want to also equip in your second right hand slot the um, Sorcerer's Catalyst and you want to remove the Grass Cat Shield. So the strat here is to two hand the bow beforehand, aim, shoot Priscilla with an arrow. Moves up in the fight and lock on. So if Priscilla spawns behind me, because I can see the arrow right here, if Priscilla spawns in front of you, like um, in this kind of angle, then uh, the, lo the lock on actually track her and you can spot her right away. But the arrow is just to track her if she turns invisible and I goes behind you. So practice Priscilla, uh, that attack you can, like the slow one you can strafe behind her and the fast ones you actually have to roll. So here's some of my footage you got lost, so I'm gonna use my PB here. I was about to say, where the fuck are those souls? <laughs> At the stand up, um, you don't do anything, you warp to and it perish, remove the mill breaker from, mill breaker from the first hand slot. Equip the shield here and equip all your uh, armor. After you load back in, uh, I'm mid rolling here because uh, my menu was wrong. But just keep to stick to the menu that I told you before. At Andre, you want to buy the crest, the weapon smith box, and nothing further. And you want to upgrade your Dragon Tooth to plus one. So right here you should not have the Mill Breaker, but you should have the Girls Crash Shield. Just FYI. Like that. You're gonna make your way over to the door you open with the crest and upon opening you want to perform a safe quit to skip the opening of the door animation and reset the um, air growth with trees here so the bonfire we're going to take here is behind the invisible wall or an illusory wall, but keep in mind that this bonfire is not warpable. So if you take any bonfire as a safety measure uh, until the DLC, uh, you will have to go back here from Undead Parish. So you load up 12 attunement and 20 intelligence, and you attune Great Heavy Soul Arrow and Fall Control. Again, close your menus with start as it's faster than B. <clears throat> so we're gonna use uh, gravity here to set up the rotation ring. So this is the reason why we have full hunter set as it makes us heavier. <clears throat> you want to um, equip the dragon tooth a bit later. I'm making a save out here for Hydra. Uh, you normally don't quit out here. Just keep moving. So we're gonna go and equip the dragon tooth um, when we're about the end because um, we're gonna go into mid roll and mid roll actually uh, slows us down a bit. So here we're gonna equip the dragon tooth, which should still be highlighted if you did everything correctly. Cast fall control. And switch to Great Heavy Soul Arrow. Toggle away the Catalyst and you will plunge. Don't touch the control stick and you will get fall damage cancelled. So I have a video on how to do Hydra and it will be linked in the description. Yes. 
Just try to mimic the stress I'm doing right here. There's nothing too much to say about the fight and on its own. Um, I would advise, um, even though the grass shield is nice here, around this place right now, go and um, actually toll the, um, the bow there. Um, yeah, I messed up the most swap, but around this place you can perform the most swap kind of easily. I uh, wanna jump in that direction and do a quit up. They will spawn the golem. Uh, so now there are two strats you can do. You can either bait out an attack from him and then attack him after, if he does the jump. Um, you can, if he does not do the jump attack, just attack him. Or if he does a jump, you can also do this and attack in mid-air, which is a little bit more risky. So if he does a jump, you just turn around and walk backwards and you'll strafe it, no problem. So jump on bone and get back. So right now you want to go and toggle the assist flask here. I'm not sure if I did that. There we go. Um, I'm gonna take it from the consistent knight. So every attack of this consistent knight will give you RTSR, except for one, the one-handed R1. Basically, this is a normal swing. You either need two attacks of that, or you. And if he doesn't do that, then it's um, up to you to immediately go up to full and try to get another attack here. But we got two-handed. Two-handed R1 is a really good one. Double it and proceed to move towards Sif. So if you already have pretty saw here, like a two-handed R2 has that effect, you might want to cast fall control here so you can still do all the optimal parting. <clears throat> I need to take damage at some point, so I just didn't run around and I actually landed on the railing there of the stairs, which didn't give me any fall damage. Which makes me able to like still do optimal pathing. Here because my stamina is very low, I'm gonna do a toggle escape. Also, I didn't even get a jump. And this is an instance of a stored roll, an actual stored roll. Uh, to get rid of it, you see me block. Blocking gets rid of stored rolls. So if you expect to have a stored roll, just block and it will get rid of it for you. So you kind of want to move so late because you're going to keep the fast um, sprinting speed. And you want to go and fight Sif. So Sif is going to be 3 shot no matter what. So yeah, Sif is kind of straightforward. What I like to do is when Sif like starts jumping back like a lot, like behaving like a bunny. Um, just um, like stand still and make Sif come to you. Um, also, you can use the bone almost ASAP. If you have full stamina, you might want to wait like a tiny bit. This menu was really weird, actually. So, you want to go to Four Kings now. So, the way you want to have your menu. Like a tiny bit. So the way you want to go your menu is you just want a mill breaker and the catalyst. So the first slot is gonna be the mill breaker, second slot is gonna be your catalyst. So you wanna reinforce your weapon to plus two here, level up to twenty-three. And during the warp, you want to do this specific um, menuing. You want to open up and you want to switch out the Dust Crown Ring, or the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, for the Dust Crown Ring and then for the Covenant of Artorias. Now, there are multiple setups here to take uh, the fall damage required. Oh. 
Also, this is the point where we're gonna go and get the feb ring. Um, as you can see here, Lawtrek is not here. There's actually a small chance. It actually threw me off. Uh, but Lawtrek is not here right now. Uh, but actually, there is a small chance that Lawtrek won't be here. Um, it's like one in three that he's not here, I think. If this is the case, um, just save and quit. And you should appear after you reload. Like that. So go away the mill breaker because well, you cannot kick. And as soon as you get the souls, you can quit out. Pick up the humanity in the fat ring and proceed as usual. So the way the thing that I use, I just run over here. Over the, uh, and like stop like at the very edge look down and when I can see these things like the this kind of ring then I backstep which gives me RT sign so again in this menu you should have the catalyst already there on the place where my bow is cause fall control before the elevator ends and sends it back up This is one of the places where I don't have um, the grass crash shield. I do right now, but then again, this menuing is wrong. You do not have. To, I do not have the grass crash shield, but you can do it if your uh, your menuing is good enough. Just keep in mind that this part is so so small that if your menuing is not optimal, you will lose time equipping the grass crash shield. So here, because you have fall control, you can do a fall control quit out. Um, as soon as you reach this spot, jump in this direction. And as soon as you can hear um, the death scream of your character, you can quit out. A little bit before is better, but it works either way. So this is Zeus Kid with Fall Control. Uh, all these resources are also on the Speed Souls wiki. So you can move up here. We should do recommend if you're kind of bad and not consistent at it. But if you're not, uh, if you're kind of consistent at it, you can just do it in the fight. So you want to drop a piece of armor and move a little bit to the right of the first, like the flash of light. And the move stop in the fight, and the king appears. I'm gonna do one running attack. Like this, you can strafe it. If you're close enough to the king, and go a little bit back here. If you're close enough to the king, um, and he does the diagonal ones, you can just go to the left and to the right of it. It preserves stamina and you can punish it with an R1. Like that you can just do two R1s. You do a running attack and two and like another running attack when he's dying. You're gonna do the same thing here with the second king. The first king is actually not like, it doesn't matter if you do it fast, yes or no. It all depends on the second king, because the second king is actually on the timer. But strafing those uh, attacks, you also can strafe the overhead. The only attack you cannot strafe... Yeah, I just didn't have to roll here. Yeah, the only attack you cannot strafe is the, this one. Now you attack again, and attack again on the dying hitbox. Here. You swap this out for the grass crash shield. Dragon tooth for the grass crash shield, not for the bow. Talk to friends, make sure to say yes here. His very last voice line will end. Uh, let me see. So after you're done with the fight and you switch to grass crash shield on your first offhand slot, dark exclamation mark is the last sentence. You, I barely passed it too late, but dark exclamation mark is his last sentence. And then you get the decision and always say yes. You wanna spam options and you get the menu open a bit is 
make sure that he won't talk to you. Put a list of Lord Vessel, don't reset it, and use a and dupe a, a Homer Bone. So now you're gonna warp to Anonondo. And in the warp, this should not be here, this should be on this spot. So only the Millbreaker and the Grasscrash Shield. And you're gonna remove the Covenant of Artorias and swap in the uh, Ring of Favor and Protection. This is all because with 22 Endurance, right now you can barely fast draw with the Dragon Tooth. And upcoming is a part where you're gonna move swap for the first time um, with the Fab Ring, and you can fast draw. So if you have anything other than the Mill Breaker and the Dragon Tooth, for example, like the way I have it now, I would have the Mill Breaker, the Dragon Tooth, and uh, the Shield, I will not fast draw, which is a pain. So right here there are the boars. I think with this amount of HP you you cannot survive it uh, unless you heal up to full. If you heal up to full, which obviously loses your time, you can survive it if one of the boars actually glitches out and hits you in the back. Like this is what should oh well like that. He should stop and then attack. Uh, I didn't bother redoing it, so I just replaced this with my PB. Um, he should just hit you in the uh, not hit you in the back. Like he should just hit stop and then do an attack, but he can just go full yolo on it. If you're at full HP though, it doesn't. Oh yeah, here is how the menu should be in this case. So yeah, he should just stop running at you and then do an attack. But sometimes he can just glitch out and that stuff happens. Nothing too much you can do. It does, it happens pretty rarely. So here's the menu you want to do for it. See, uh, mill breaker one, drag it second. You want to switch this out for the bow, and you want to start duplicating the home or uh, the soul. After that, you want to move swap and heal up to full. After that's done, um, I like to go on the left and dodge it like this. You can also go on the right. Oh, what am I doing here? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm explaining as well now that you should have the, only the new break in the bow. But um, one running attack here is enough. Keep uh, an eye on those um, hollows, they have really fast attacks. If you strafe them to like either like directly to the left or to the right, you should be able to like get rid of most of their attacks. Um, sometimes you do have to roll though. Keep in mind that they're also buffed and they do shit loads of damage. Alright, so on this lever you want to switch out the Dragon Tooth for the for the catalyst. And you want to dupe twice. After you're done duping, you want to ring swap. And ring swapping is basically equipping the Dusk Ground Ring and removing it again. After that you want to perform the Duke Skip. Which is where I saw footage from. So I already am ring swapped. Only two items equipped, the uh, mill breaker in the first and the uh, catalyst in the second. So we pull the lever, there's also a um, video I'm gonna link in the description for uh, Juke Skip. With visual cues and all that. Uh, an important thing to note is I landed on the railing. If you land on the railing, this guy will actually notice you and move out of the way. If you land on the floor directly, without actually landing on the railing, he will not notice you. So you'll need to put him um, out of the way with like an attack of the meal breaker or a fist. So you cast fall control and you do a fall control quit out down here. So do the pausing that I take like around the pillar to like interact with this lever really quickly. Like the lever has some weird hitbox in or in like some weird way to interact. If you go for like uh, is too straight too much of a straight line, you will not be able to pull it for some reason. So here after these guys did their attack, 
We can also cast it a bit before it, but we want to cast file control, and you want to do the crystal cave file control skip, which I don't think there's a video, so I'm gonna explain it. You have to jump at the very edge of this one, of this like um, crystal thing. You jump straight forward, open the menu, and count the amount of times this arm is swinging. It's three swings for this one. So it's one, two, three. And at the third, you want to quit out. I'm going to count it when his arm is like at the most wide position as one. And that uh, lands you on this invisible bridge. It saves around seven seconds in game time, if I'm not mistaken. Seven or eight, something like that. So I think I got a climb in here, but my. Uh, you just want to like. There are some videos on YouTube on how to get no clamps. I will try and find one. I do this uh, most of the time. It works when both of these guys aggro on me. I want to be low on the stamina, but when both of them aggro, I regain to full. And I start sprinting around this rock, or, and then cutting to the middle. Baiting out the attack from these two guys, and then going for it. I haven't had clamps in a long time, but in this tutorial, it actually, I actually got them. So, you want to run towards seeds and turn your camera around in the meantime. Shoot the crystal and move up in the boss room. Then you want to make sure, since the dragon tooth is kind of long, to like attack him diagonally. Like, or like to the side like this. Because his core takes increased damage. And if you attack him like right from the front, you're actually not going to like make contact anymore with the core, but actually his main body, and he won't deal bonus damage. Use sort of Gwindling while he's dying, and deal to Hummer Bone. So here's going to be a tiny bit of menuing, since Butterfly is one of those bosses where ma magic is actually faster to kill it with, just pure magic. So on this I equip um, the shields in the first offhand and the catalyst in the first um, right hand slot and toggle the great heavy sword arrow. Now on the next four gates we want to switch out RT Sarvus because we're not going to use it for this one and we're going to switch it for the bellowing dragon crest ring and we're going to uh, equip the soul of Sith. Then do two rolls here and start trooping. And you can start shooting immediately. And it's five great heavies. Nice high frames. Uh, it's five great heavies for uh, butterfly. See, butterfly can be actually really trolly in this one as well. Yeah, just like that. Equip the Dust Crown Ring and Jupiter Bone. You can actually use the bone here as well if you want to. Works. Either works. If you uh, jump the bone and not equip the Dust Crown Ring, this is the moment on the stand up animation where you can also equip it. And I think I made a save file here. For some reason. Alright, so. Uh, we're going to make our way to the DLC. And in the DLC we're going to pick up our main uh, spell that we're going to use for the rest of the game. Post DLC. So as we make our way to the, uh, play, uh, to the ladder, we're going to do another fall damage cancel. Um, using fall control. We're going to set up RTSR here again by gravity. However, because we have the dust crown ring, we don't need any heavy armor or anything like that. We just roll onto the bridge, cast fall control, toggle away the staff, do a plunge, and don't touch the controller. You can touch the camera, but don't touch the control, the left analog stick. So optimally, you would move up in the guardian boss fights. 
but I I don't really feel comfortable doing that, so I don't. So here, uh, when you retrieve stamina, um, equip the um, mill breaker, and again when you retrieve stamina, equip the bow and we'll swap. Again, you can also do this in the fight. Interact with portal. Skip the bonfire and do keep in mind that we still have the discard ring toggled. So we want to go and switch it out for the RTSR. So for Guardian, um, we kind of you kind of strafe the lighting attacks here, which I like more than rolling. And you just kind of want to wait for him to stop. So for this guy, this attack cycle, there is a video by Capitan Tunnel explaining this. Uh, I can explain you real quick as well. Um, it's 52. Let me go back a bit here. So you just want to wait out until he stops doing this stuff. So when he attacks you, he now starts with a head attack. And he then follows up with a paw attack. Like, if he does head head or two paws in a row, that means the combo is over. But he starts with the head and then follows up with a paw, that means he's gonna do the full four hit combo. So, two times the same body type, so two times a head or two times a paw, means that the combo is over. But if he starts with the head and follows up with a paw or vice versa, then you know it's gonna be the full hit combo. So, this was the second, third, fourth. And after that you can attack, we can do the stamina, I fucked up here. You can kill him there. Again the full hit combo. And you can switch it out for the... For the Graska shield. So yeah, normally you can kill him there if you did some good stamina management, but I kinda messed up there. I recommend you watching a lot of PBs on how people fight this. So you're gonna talk to the mushroom here on C yes and buy him a body. So there is a way you can actually um how's it called? Um take the bonfire here and you have to do a little bit of uh, improvement for an RTSR setup, which I will go through a bit later. So here uh you're gonna walk up this place and you wanna quit out to reset the aggro of the enemies. Do, when you lit, do it when you're low on stamina, because you're gonna retrieve it here. And on the stand up, you wanna switch out the shield for the um, for the catalyst. My visual cue is this little plan thing. Around this place, I'll cast fall control. That way, it uh, runs out perfectly when you enter the Arturus boss fight, because you wanna use a blossom. And you cannot have use you cannot have fall control and the blossom active at the same time. So there are two setups here. Um, one is the one I'm using. You just walk up the thing. So you over here you just walk against it and you can get up here. And then you walk in a slight angle forward. And it will plunge. Like that. There is a second setup. Um, can I show that? 55. Yeah. So there's a second setup which I do not prefer because it is actually inconsistent. Um, people claim it to be faster, but I don't think anyone actually ever timed it. It is about the same speed. I guess it's personal preference, but I have never failed this one if you set it up properly. And I've seen plenty of people fail this one randomly. So you can like walk against this place and get stuck then press s on your keyboard to like do a full turnaround and then do a back step um it's actually not that much slower if anything at all to do this and it's 100 percent consistent because you control it yourself and you're not reliant of clunky game mechanics oh. so you want to switch out the catalyst for the bow say no buy four green blossoms one homeward bone or two if you use the dead butterfly and a light salesman. 
This is also the place that if you missed any black fire bombs, you can uh, buy extra ones for God of Chaos. So at this point, you won't have two black fire bombs. See, I can now already use the blossom. So you want to move up before Artorias and use the blossom in the fight. You can just spam and then use it as soon as possible. Walk forward. If you get this opening, you can just strafe it. Um, if you get, for example, a jump opening, run to the left because it's close to the fog gate and you can also strafe that one. You want to do an attack and you want to keep holding circle and as soon as you're out of your attack animation and you're been running again at full speed, go for another attack and it will stagger him again. Then you either you will go buff or you can or you have to dodge another attack of him and that's gonna be a kill. Either way. So you do have to do you have to go into three kind of attack rounds. There is a thing called early calamity trigger, which is triggering calamity before. But here I'm gonna level up 14 and 37 and attune in the body. So the deal with early calamity trigger is um, also for a RTSR setup, kind of nice, I guess. So in terms of RTSR setups, there have been some in uh, races and tournament matches where you can look at. Um, if you ring swap and jump off here, I think that's the fastest. So here's the elevator. Just ring swap and jump straight off like forward. And that should give you RTSR. So if you didn't do the early calamity trigger, which is basically running through here in RTSR range before Artorius, uh, you can save two and a half seconds. Uh, but if you don't do that, which I would recommend you at the start, you can just run through here normally without RTSR. And you want to do it like straight after Artorius, and uh, not on a calamity segment. So you just want to run in here, and I drop down here since the dogs tend, tend to fall off like that. You want to do this manually. You want to like have mill breaker first, staff there, and switch it out for the and switch out the RTSR for the bellowing train crusher. And then jump the bone and activate as soon as you see Kalamid fly past the rocks. So here you want to cast fall control, and this is kind of a weird, funky place to set up our TSR. So we want to go in an angle, and then walk straight for it, and then do a crit out. You might fail this, and there is no real understanding why. What you just want to do is like spawn back on top and just try again. Um, it's kind of weird why that happens. So you want to cast in both before you leave this kind of doorway. And you want to go for the Kresky. So, get your Great Devil's Arrow and your Lois ready. And there are two strats here. One is to do the Quit Out strat, and one is to do not to do the Quit Out strat. The not Quit Out strat is faster if it works. However, the monkey's movement is kind of annoying if you don't Quit Out, and you tend to hit the table or miss the monkey in general. So, Quit Out here if you want to be safe. Um, because of your quit out, the monkey actually doesn't notice you. So you can throw the Lloyds first and then shoot the monkey with the Great Heavy, killing him. Over here, um, if, you wanna, if you're optimal at the um, swapping or at the pickup, you want to swap out the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring for the Discount Ring, giving you very little HP. Dodge this guy and cast him away. If you do this, you want to take the full jump here. The reason why I say if is that having this little HP makes a dark beat pick up a insta kill. Um, you can also, um, you only have to do this if you do not take the bonfire, by the way. If you take the bonfire, the setup is a bit different, which I will talk to later. So if you don't take the bonfire, um, 
just to do this. And not taking them on first, obviously, first. As soon as you hit them, body run out, cast far control. And dodge him if necessary. Jump over the upcoming platform or elevator and do a fall control pull up. So I am not taking the um, the bonfire here um, because of it's a tutorial and like want to show the correct strats. If you do, um, don't bother with the discard ring and just keep the bellowing dragon crystalling on. So the only real spooky part here is the darky pickup. So this is kind of the place around this like sticking out part of the rock. Where I start crossing hidden body. Switch to great heavy soil arrow. And do the pass thing that I do right here. Cast and shoot the sorcerer. Pick up dark beats. And make your way through. So yeah, these monkeys can randomly start being super fast and notice you really early. So this is why grabbing the bonfire is kind of nice. All right, so here you, you want to go to the body again. If you take the bonfire, you have full HP here. Take those two drops, just like this. And at this point, you want to start uh, the muscle. So because you have way more HP if you took the bonfire, you want to uh, remove the dust crown ring during this fall instead of keeping it on. So either remove it now or during the jump. So here's going to be minus fall gate skip. At this point, you like want to run a little bit further than you should, kind of, a little bit past this part, and then jump diagonally to the right. And just like that, you take. Here I only take a little bit of fall damage because I have the dust crown ring still on. Again, if you do take the bonfire, remove it and you have RT sign. During that jump, you could RT sign, eat a blossom and kill Manus. Um, if Manus is a jumping attack and you're really close, you want to roll before he jumps, basically. When like, dodge the initial jump already and not necessarily the attack that follows. Manus is like not really stagger based, so you kind of have to learn his moves. Just don't hit his hands, and you should be fine. And when you hear his staff hit the ground, you can quit out, or you can hover bow. If Manus does the rain, you can actually double KO with him. If he's one hit away and does the rain, I personally think it's uh, better to go in and go for the double KO, as you have no idea how many rains he will follow up with. So, if he gives you perfect RNG right after, it might be faster to just dodge the rain. However, he might just go for like two rains in a row or start doing other attacks and you have to dodge. So, yeah. It's personal preference, but I really like the double KO strat. So make make him shoot Kalamid. And use the helmet gun. Don't jump it, just use it. And this is the time where you just go to Kalamid. Um, this is one of those places where removing the dragon tooth for the crosscast shield will save you one second. You don't do this most so often, really, but I had to do something while recording. So yeah, uh, removing the, the moose up here is like actually not worth it. So yeah, just make your way to the warrior wood. Um, you can do the pausing that I do to make it less likely to get hit by the dogs. However, if they just want to go in and screw you over, they actually will. You guess you can kill them, but it's slow. So 
So yeah, if you run over here at these logs, this guy will always move over there, getting stuck. So at this full gate, you want to go and switch the Artisar for the discard ring. Eat and blossom before you fall down. Right here. Now you either want to land on this platform and roll off, or on this one below, it doesn't really matter. And switch out the discard ring for the right Artisar ring, and get your home bone ready. Again, Kelamid, this is the perfect opener. Just learn his moves. It's a non stagger based fight, so there are no real speed and strats. Other than the fact that if he grabs you and you read it early enough, you can go under him and attack him twice. And kill him. As you can see, I'm like one hit away. So if you can get a rolling attack in at like a bad fight. Um, that is also completely fine. Um, you still need to do some manuing. Um, I actually keep the... the um, oh, you can burn when you hear him fall, by the way. Um, I switch out the Dragon Tooth for the Crosscut -cross Shield. Keep the... Um, um, let me actually go back here. I keep the mill breaker and I equip the um, catalyst like right next to it, which has some usefulness later on. Warp to fire link, and during the warp, you can break the fab ring for the Pelham Dragon Crest ring, which is this is how your menu has to look like. So, mill breaker, cross shield, catalyst, PDR, artisan. So at Firelink, you want to do like all the boss around the Firelink bonfire in no specific order. Just do whatever you are most uncomfortable with first, so like get the reset points out of the way. So rest at Firelink, get you in Dark Beat and do everything around the Dark Beat, or around the Firelink bonfire. Which is Nito, Capra, Gaping. And that's it, actually. So you can switch out Nito and Kepler Gaping. So now you have Dark Beat and Dark Beat is a pretty damn good spell. But you still have to pay attention since your health is still really low. And yeah, this game can still fuck you over if you're not careful. Like that. <laughs> Those are like the small time saves that are kind of annoying, or time losses that are kind of annoying. So push the lever and quit out to skip the animation. Load right back in. Dodge this guy's fire, he will always shoot it. And cast fall control. Run off here. And do a fuck to quit out. You can use audio in order to know if these guys are following you and how close they are, and then dodge them accordingly. If you want, to, if you want to keep the fab ring, you can also break it at this point and switch it for the Bellowing Dragon Crest ring. And not on the warp, it's also fine. I got majorly trolled here, but I didn't die. But that, that can happen. So open up the start menu here, so you won't get like the right of kindling message. So just open up start, the, the start menu during his death. And after you get like the right of kindling, you can close it again. So you want to like follow my pathing that I'm doing here. There is some updated pathing. It saves a little bit of time. I don't. I sadly do not have footage of it. But it's like a slight bit, slightly faster. Don't get hit here, by the way. 
You can just strafe him, I'm just bad. You just walk past him. Jump up there. Of course, I got a storage over here. And I got a storage up there. <laughs> so what triggers the storage wall is like landing on like a little slope there. That triggers the storage wall. So here you don't really need hidden body. Um, you can cast it if you're not comfortable. You have a spare one. But you really don't need it. So dodge these guys and in order to... Oh yeah, I made a save for here for some explanation on uh, Mito. But um, if you want to dodge all these pinwheels, just don't roll to the side here, but roll forward and then cut to the side. My uh, turn was a bit sharp, but like this, all the pinwheels will miss you. So if you get a stored roll at the start of the fight, you're kind of fucked. So how to avoid that is like this. You toggle away your shield and then do everything as normal. Ring swap, cast in a body. Uh, you can dodge Nito's screams um, as the scream will like pop up under you when he puts his sword into the ground. So as long as you can see him, dodging it is not really a problem. But you can also, like if you get it at the start, it's kind of a problem. So you jump down here. And like this, now I got a story roll. So what do I do? You roll, you spam L1 to do a punch, and you spam roll again. So as soon as you get up, you spam roll, you keep spamming roll. As soon as you get the roll, you spam L1 to get like the short punch, because you throw it away, you cross cast shield. And then you roll again. I kind of messed up the fight here. You want to start shooting the ske skellies ASAP, because then the um, dark beat will also hit Nito. That was too close here, and Nito didn't get hit at all. Normally he gets uh, hit by like a little bit, and it's only two dark beats, but now it's just three. Again, watch like a PB. Watch a lot of PBs actually, and you'll notice the, um, the proper way of like when to start casting. You can also figure that for yourself. As soon as he explodes, like the uh, little explosion of souls there, like the particles, you can use some of them. The whole reason why I keep the, um, the mill breaker out is for this specific hollow. Not this one. For just for the hollow that throws the fire bombs at you. So you want to cast hidden body. Here's also some strat where you actually equip the dust crown ring here, do the drop with the dust crown ring on, and unequip it at the Capra for gate. That way you will always have RTSR for gaping. You don't need it, but um, if you don't get the slam, it will be a two shot. Either way, if you get the slam, it doesn't change anything. And the slam is like the most common one. So toggle again your meal breaker. Normally you do a double attack there and push this guy off. So if you're a peach like me, <laughs> roll this direction and heal. Toggle uh, your catalyst with casting dark beat. And when I start spamming is when I like uh, when my character is past this place, except for when he does the uh, non-jumping attack. Attack. So if he does a jumping attack, you do it here. Otherwise, you walk a bit further out. So right there, you start casting. And open the quit out menu. And as soon as his knees hit the ground, you wanna quit out. Out of the game. you're gonna load back in again you could set up rtsr but it's really not uh, required really even though it can lose you some time if you get really unlucky so it's up to you it's again the risk speed trade-off
So here are some new strats, but it involves transition clipping, but I'm not really comfortable with those, so I'm not using them in the tutorial. They save quite a bit of time, like 17 seconds or so. I'm putting the number out of my ass, but like 10 seconds at least. Just follow the pathing here if you just don't want to do it, which I really <laughs> do recommend. So follow my pathing to make this red always do the same. Put a wide angle around him, he will never hit you. So for gaping, you really want to slam if you don't have RT sorry. If you do go with RT sorry this thread. Like right here, you spam um, dark beats. If you had RT sorry, but I didn't, so I had to quit out. Um, yeah, you do get a slam. If you land all of your dark beats on the nose, yeah, I missed there. It's still two shots. If you miss one, it's a three shot. Equip the Dusk Crown Ring and use a Hunger Bone. Or a Jupiter, I guess. Add the stand up, remove it. I do the same setup you did on your way to Four Kings. And. Um, after this, we're gonna do the blight down skip, which will also be a video in the tutorial or in the description. So here, I kind of messed up, and as you can see, I did not have RTs or just yet. So I don't cast fall control. Normally, you cast fall control on this ladder, but I didn't. So I'm just gonna take some fall damage here and cast fall control right now. If you didn't miss the setup, like you shouldn't, um, you can cast fall control on the uh, elevator to save some time. Yeah, I'm doing it right here. And the first part of Byton skip is to um, seal skip again. And after you did seal skip, you want to do yeah, instead of like going normally, you're gonna go up the stairs here. Go up the other set of stairs, and now you're gonna trigger death cam. So to get rid of it, we quit out. Now the pathing here is somewhat important since uh, there is a death cam box on the right of this. So you kinda wanna stick to the left. Now you wanna go and run, and once you're almost out of stamina, I'm gonna jump and quit out. And a quit out will actually trigger the load of Blighton. So for Blighton skip, even though there will be a video linked in the description, I'm gonna walk through it a little bit of my setup. So there are gonna be rocks around this place. You're gonna cast fall control, and you wanna look for this long rock thing this long one on the left side there's going to be a big rock sticking out here right in front of it and i'm going to use that rock and i'm going to jump towards the pillar so jump at the rock towards the pillar and like the crystal cave fall control we're going to count the amount of times that the r swing so it's going to be one two and it's a big quit out also make sure to not open the entire quit out menu, just open up the second to last one. So not the yes, no one, just one before that. So since you're gonna go to Quaylock now, I'm gonna cast fall control right before the fog gate, interrogate the fog gate, equip the dragon tooth in the first slot and get rid of it immediately. It's to make menu later a bit easier. So if she jumps, just run around and do shot her. If she doesn't jump, um, go for the stagger. So you aim for the body and it will stagger her and then finish off. Ring the bell and equip the dust crown ring.
So here you take the Caesar's bonfire, and now there are two things you can do. One is a safe way, and one is a slightly faster way. So you can go with 20 vitality here if you didn't die, which will make you able to survive a bit of Chaos Firestorm. What you also can do is you can go for 46 intelligence, which is the fastest way, so that's what I'm going to demonstrate. At the stand up, remove the Tusk Armory. Roll. And put on the Tusk Armory at the. Uh, and put on the RT, sorry, on the full gate here. So, if you go for Vitality instead of Intelligence, you need, um, other than the Plunge, an R1 for um, Fire Sage Demon before you can start casting Dark Beat. Um, if you didn't level Intelligence, you can just follow the route that I'm doing right now. Um, I'm not really sure if it's worth going for 46. It's up to you, really. Like, if you want to like risk getting Firestorm at the very end of your run, then go 46. If you don't want to risk it, then go with Vitality. So two Dark Beats will take care of Ceases. You can cast the third one because it won't lose any time. And home bomb when you see the soul's particle disappear. And now there's a glitch called Fire Sage Elevator Clip. Um, I'm just gonna put like a link of like Dark Souls 1 glitches in the description so I can just forward you to like that. <laughs> you can search it for yourself. So this skip just kind of works in the way that you quit out and you're gonna Oh yeah, right. Right before you do an initiate the entire thing, you want. Dude, it will be so nice. All right, there we go. This is the reason why you equip the dragon tooth to the quit out for gate. In the first slot, equip the dragon tooth and two handed, and then start quitting out. What this does, it will let you slide through the elevator with every quit out a little bit more. At some and at some point you're just gonna clip through it. One more. There we go. So you want to plunge. So if you did it correctly, you get a plunge. And right here you have two options. And this only is uh, applicable to the people who level up Vitality instead of Intelligence. You can just start swimming Dark Beat. It's going to be 4 Dark Beat instead of 3. That means that you either have to... That you have to 2 shot Centipede and you won't have Dark Beat for... Um, uh, Bed of Chaos. So it doesn't really matter as long as your aim is correct. But if you don't want to do that and take it a bit safer... You can do the plunge and then an R1 with the Dragon Tooth and then it's still 3 Dark Beats. That way you can still kill Centipede in 2 if your aim is properly. And if you do that then you still have enough Dark Beat to shoot Bed of Chaos. If you didn't 2 shot um, Centipede you still have a spare Dark Beat just in case. All right. So during the plunge you want to go and Ring Swap. Throw it away. You also want to unequip it, by the way. So you want to unequip the dragon tooth, and you want to ring swap. Is now I'm mid rolling. So yeah, you want to bring uh, throw it away and ring swap during the, or you want to unequip it and ring swap during the plunge. So for the R2 side setup for centipede. Run along, run along this line and then take a left, land on top of here. Be sure to land in the middle and not on the sides, otherwise, you will get a store draw. And on this, um, you want to actually start equipping a little bit of armor. So, we like, you could like the, the legs or whatever. For Centipede, the first shot, when I turn around, and the first shot is, are gonna be on the arm here. See? The first beats are gonna go and hit the arm. And then, yeah, see, I barely didn't kill it. 
and now I have a spare one. I just kind of shoot it. So you want to heal twice, and you want to be sure to have the full armor set and equip the orange charge ring. So equipping the armor set would be nice to do on the um, full gate to send Pete. That full gate to enter the fight, you can equip the set on. I didn't do that, but I should have. Now uh, follow this spotting, and the reason why we equip armor in the first place is because you can skip the heal if you do it properly. Um, I also forgot to mention, I didn't realize that I'm actually mid-rolling here. So you cannot equip your chest piece, the gloves and the legs. Um, so you just equip the chest piece and the legs or the chest piece and the gloves. Don't equip all three pieces because you're gonna mid-roll and it's gonna end up something like this. <laughs> That and mid roll in general is slower. If I roll now, you will see that I probably have a mid roll. I think at least it was something like that. Doesn't look like it. I'm confused. Either way, just. Be sure to do that. I think I roll it. Yeah, I will roll it. Battle chaos. Do you mid roll with this? Dude, I'm so confused now. I don't think I are. No, you don't. Never mind, I guess. No, I don't. I'm saying just forget everything I said. <laughs> just equip the full armor piece, and then move your way to it. Just. Ignore everything. Then you're gonna remove the set. Re equip RT, sorry. Equip the bow and equip the bombs. This is why I got confused because you mid roll with the bow but you don't mid roll without anything. So, pardon me, just equip the full set and make sure it will not be mid rolling. So, for Toki bombs, there are gonna be plenty of videos. Be sure to. Um, this is my great setup. Be sure to eat the blossom, then throw the first bomb, and the second bomb over there. Alright, so if you do this fast enough, if the, like the, not this one, this one you can take your time in, but the second one should be fast. If you throw the second one fast enough, you will uh, really reduce the chances of you getting Firestorm. And normally, right here, you shoot your Dark Beat if you didn't miss. But I missed, so I have to <laughs> do that instead. And just like that, there's only Gwyn left. So. I'm honestly don't remembering the 20 vitality win RTs are set up, but I, if I'm not mistaken, it is a counter attack from the Black Knight. But for uh, 11, you want to either have three soft humanities, and I have zero, or the gloves. I have zero, so I have the gloves on. And I think I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sh uh, certain that with 20, it's actually just a running attack from a black knight and you take counter damage from that one but yeah here we don't we're not gonna take counter damage so you wanna like go around here to bait it out and then stop running and toggle escape that way you get perfect rtsr now this guy can be kind of a dick because he can do a fast attack not that one, but like another like horizontal one. And that one is pretty spooky and you have to roll that. Don't mind the souls there, I didn't die. Nope. I actually ran off there and choked to quit out. <laughs> so 
So you want to keep holding up the shield here to increase the chance of this guy doing the shield bash. Then for the final stretch. You can go either left or right on this guy, it doesn't really matter. Just be wary if he doesn't jump attack. That's your curve around to the right. This guy always take on the right. Never hits you. In track with pocket. Spam roll here. Do one parry. Hit you twice. And that is Dark Souls 1, all bosses. So, some quick afterthoughts. Um, I kind of want to thank someone, uh, some people, uh, especially Kamu78 for um, routing this in the first place. Um, other than that, I want to thank everyone that is involved uh, finding strats and finding skips, glitches and other stuff. Doing testing. Um, Want to involve all the uh, thank all the mothers like um, TK for making a gadget that makes it way way easier to um, to practice stuff. And yeah, other than that, I just want to like for the new runners out there who are still watching, um, I want to keep um, I want to keep saying that watch runs, watch people do runs, ask questions in streams, learn about yourself, make safe states for every fight, check out speedsos.com, um, join the discord, stuff like that. Um, if there are any questions that you don't want to ask there, um, there is always an option to comment down below and I will try to answer them as best as I can. The credits is also where timing stops. So if you reach this point, just split on live split if this is your if you're on PC. If you are on Xbox uh, PS or PlayStation 3, uh, you can uh, force close the game during the credits and uh, once you load in the, f the time that is set in the main menu is your final time. With that, I'm gonna wrap up this Mail Dracker tutorial. I hope you guys um, learned a lot from this um yeah again if you didn't feel free to question down below and hopefully um you guys will get a lot of good times thanks for watching have a very nice rest of the day and goodbye